Oh man, what's up guys? Spin Firearms here, and I have a feeling I'm going to stir up some more crap. Completely unnecessary, no reason for it, but that's how the internet is. They always have something to say, they always have an opinion, but they base that opinion off themselves. They never listen to what actually is being said, and on top of that, a lot of times it's just someone who just stumbled across the channel and then made a decision from one video. They don't know how I talk about every firearm company, every manufacturer, and so on. Before we get started, hit the like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe. Today we're going to be talking about the Sig Sauer P365 and all of its variants. So the P365, the 380 version, the X, the XL, the Tac Ops, the Macro, they're all interchangeable throughout this video. Now, what happened is I made a video talking about why I don't carry the P365. And the reason why I made that video is I put out a YouTube short talking about you know the p365 why i don't carry it and so on so a lot of people got on there and said oh you're biased you're a glock fanboy you'll never speak evenly about sig and then i had to make the video talking about sig real life experience always beats a video on youtube here's the thing people will go and watch a reviewer's video and they'll say oh i love the p365 because they shot it really well they enjoyed it they loved it they edited their video we don't know if there's any malfunctions. I don't edit. So if I get a malfunction, you guys see it. I don't edit. So if I miss a shot, I miss a shot. It is what it is. But a lot of times there's money put behind these handguns, um, and you'll watch some people change as they review them. But the difference is with me, I take my stuff to the range. I shoot it. I test it. I test stuff back to back. I see what has more recoil, what I like better. And the SIG P365s have just been one of those handguns that has given me tons of trouble. And I made the video talking about why I don't carry the P365, why I have them, and so on. I made a video talking about my, like, six awesome everyday carry options, right? And it's just six random firearms I picked that I think are great options for so many people, um, whether it's price-wise, reliability, overall platform, and so on. And the number one comment I got from people is, why no P365, or you're crazy, no P365. So here's my question to you guys. Should I say, okay, my top, or seven awesome handgun choices, right? Put the six that I already put on there, and then throw this in there. And completely lie to you guys? I'm, that's just ridiculous. I've had four SIG P365s. I have the 365 and 9mm, which is this one. I have the 380 version. I have this XL. And then I have an X macro that is just uh, not comped. It's an uncomped X macro, right? And the thing is, out of four handguns, right, out of four SIGs that I got, two out of four had issues. One had terrible issues to the point where my local gunsmith, I didn't want to send it away to SIG. I wanted to know the true problem, what actually happened, and so on. So I took it to my local gunsmith, and I like supporting local businesses and anything 2A related. He fixed it, told me exactly what it was, and so on. My handgun locked back completely because a part was out of spec. And this is while shooting, right? So I'm shooting at the range, and my handgun locks completely back. Not on the slide stop, but just, you know, partially back. Almost all the way back, right? This part, the front of your um, slide and barrel probably came to here, right? And it was completely locked up. I made videos on it. You can go see them on my YouTube channel. Now tell me this. In a self-defense encounter, if that happens, I'm dead. It's that simple. If I take one shot and it locks back like that, I'm dead. There is no clearing a malfunction like that. I have over 30 Glocks. I've had malfunctions to the Glock 28, but I don't carry it because I don't like unreliable handguns. I don't carry it. Even though Glock got it running for me and it runs reliably now, I still won't carry it. It just is what it is, right? Then we had the XL. The XL didn't give me issues until, you know, maybe 700 rounds in or whatever the case may be. And they weren't terrible. You know, it could be ammo related, whatever the case may be. But once again, I have over 30 Glocks. I had a couple um, failures to feed with my Glock 45 when I first got it and took it to the range. I had a Hive base plate on a Glock 26 malfunction, which isn't the handgun's issue. And then I'm trying to think, a Glock 27 um, shooting a 13 round Glock 23 mag that I just bought also had issues. Other than that, every handgun has ran flawlessly, even with drum mags, ETS mags, all sorts of bullcrap mags, aftermarket parts, everything. They just run. But people have the nerve to get on here and say I'm a SIG hater because I don't want to carry a handgun that is unreliable. On top of that, I'm not the only one who says it. SIG put out the P365, and the reason you don't hear about it nowadays is the X Macro and all these releases. But look at the first three years of the SIG P365 being released. Do you guys see the amount of issues it had? And we're talking about a $500, $600 gun. 
We're not talking a $250 Taurus, $250 Stoger. You know, sometimes when you have a price point like that, sometimes, you know, you could expect a malfunction. You could say, okay, it's a cheaper handgun. It might malfunction. I probably wouldn't carry it if I had a malfunction. But if you're paying $500, $600 and from a company with the reputation of Sig Sauer and that name, guys, it shouldn't have those issues. Not that many. Yes, you're always going to have lemons. These are made by humans at the end of the day. Machining can get old, out of spec, whatever the case may be. But not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of firearms having issues. Right? They kept it real quiet, but everyone knows the issues with tying the three, P365. Tell me, guys. List off the issues with this handgun right here. Glock 26. This has been out since 1994. Tell me all the issues it's had. One of the most trustworthy guns in the world. Yes, it's thicker, right? Look at that. 15 plus 1 and 9mm on the right, 12 plus 1 on the left. Obviously, Glock 26 is thicker, but it has three more rounds. You know, length, very similar. Very similar in size handguns. Obviously, this is much thinner. I'm just talking overall footprint and length and stuff like that. But no issues with Glock 26s. You don't hear that. They don't release a firearm. I guess the Glock 28 was sort of released and beta tested on the population. But you don't release handguns and then say, okay, we're going to learn from them after however many are sold, right? You do all that before. You can't tell me they tested the P365 extensively, didn't notice any issues, didn't notice any problems, didn't have any unreliability issues or any unreliable handguns. And they said, okay, yeah, let's release it. And then all of a sudden, the handguns made in the exact same factory, exact same place, plagued with issues. Don't believe me? Go on Reddit forums. Go on YouTube. Ask people who have P365s. I know people with P365s with 60,000 rounds, not a single issue. I know people with P365s right out of the box, they got rid of it because it was unreliable. It's all over the place and you shouldn't have that. Yes, every now and then you're going to have lemons, but not thousands and thousands and thousands of lemons, even if it is one of the most popular handguns on the market. Now, Obviously, I've been making these builds. I'm trying to get them to redeem themselves. I use these handguns mostly to compare against other handguns, but I also wanted to build a P365 that I actually like. Um, and this is one right here. I like shooting these handguns. I really do. I like the way they feel. I don't like the original P365 grip. It feels like there's something left to be desired. But for how small they are, they really handle recoil well. Um, you know, they're good shooters. They're accurate, come with nice night sights. The other reason I don't carry it, I do a lot of pocket carry. And if you have a $500, $600 gun that has rust. Now, I, every time I mention this problem, people come up to me and say, oh, well, mine hasn't rusted. So, just like, um, let's see. Where is my Beretta Pico? I'm trying to look for my Beretta Pico real quick. Come on, where are you at? Whatever, I can't find it. But my point is, just because this didn't rust, doesn't mean that won't rust. And here's the thing, a lot of people who maintain, take care of their firearms, keep them in a humid, you know, a place with a dehumidifier, stuff like that, you know, they have even been seeing rust, which is insane. I take care of my firearms, I clean them, I haven't had any rust issues, but the places people are seeing rust are on the magazine body, which is huge when it comes to malfunctions. Your magazine is crucial for when it comes to malfunctions. People are also having rust in your serrations, around your sights, and on the top of your barrel is what I've seen in person, in real life. I have nothing against SIG. They're older models. They're P, you know, 938s, 238s. I want to get those. Those are well-produced handguns, awesome, reliable, don't rust, and so on. The P226, the P224. I mean, I could go on. There's so many great SIG handguns. But I hate to say it. P365, in my opinion, from my experience, from having 50% reliability out of four handguns, that probably costed me about, what, $22 to $2,400 and they're unreliable. It is what it is, guys. I'll keep my Glock.